Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking, and in today's little dev update, we are going to talk about, um, let's see, five things. First one, the big update. It has been released, as well as its first hotfix. So everything that you see here, uh, or, well, I'm going to show you some new stuff as well, or discuss it at least. Um, everything that you see here in the game is the version that you can play yourself. It is on the opt-in beta branch. Beyond that, I'm going to mention something about the... Uh, official design competition. We have a new judge confirmed. Then I'm going to talk about recent sportiness and throttle response changes. Um, pretty big gameplay change that. Then uh, we're going to talk about some future stuff that is coming in within the next few patches, the next few days I would think, uh, about power steering and differentials. And then I also want to mention that there are some tuning guides and videos coming to aid your um, poor little minds that have been exploded by the plethora of new options in the engine designer and nothing working as before. I have to announce to you another celebrity judge that is going to uh, work with us for the official design competition. Remember, it is the 5th of October that is um, the deadline for your submissions. And we have a celebrity judge for category J, that is the uh, concept car 2035. It is Frank Stephenson. Oi, Kirob! Who, who, who's that? Oh, shit. All right, let's uh, well, uh, check out what he has done then. Uh, well, he designed the. Uh, Ford Escort uh, Cosworth, then the BMW X5, and then the, the Mini, and then the Ferrari F430, then the Maserati MC12, Ferrari FXX, and the Maserati Grand Sport, the Fiat 500, and the McLaren MP412C, and the McLaren P1, and the McLaren 675T, and the McLaren 570 and the McLaren 570 and then... A flying car. In all seriousness, th this is pretty awesome. So, um, get your submissions ready, and uh, I'm, I'm sure Frank will have some comments on those. Once again, the reminder, official design competition submission deadline is the 5th of October. And I have uh, all the links in the video description down below. Check it out. So what I want to talk to you about next is some of the design changes that have been going into sportiness. And what better car to look at than the super sporty, max sport, super sporty Revy engine. It, yes, because that has everything that we need. I hope. But before we get into that, I wanted to show you a new usability. Look at this. The four-way split graph mode. Yes, uh, in the past two weeks we spent a lot of time fine-tuning some of the um, UI feedback that we are giving to the player and making sure that there is all the information that you need in order to tune engines in this um, rather more complex environment. And what does that entail? Well, we have the four-way split graph here with power and torque and flow, all the flows that are relevant. Uh, we have the brake-specific fuel consumption map as well as the timing map. But in this layout, you have one big problem, and that is that you don't really see the flow bench. You don't need to because you now have the flow utilized graph. And you don't see the stress bench. That is a problem. So we have implemented it up here at the top with our icons and just the number that is the minimum. And there's also a uh, knock warning and of course a valve float one there too. So um, what is this about? Well, it is about the very latest changes that we have so far not talked about here yet. And those are that we now have a new section in here, which is called balancing mass. Um, well, this was the kind of uh, balance section before, and it has been expanded with another slider. And you also see that it has been shifted in place with the varying capacity. Minor details which are going to fuck up your muscle memory. Not as much as um, the RPM slider being on the top end, but I mean, it's still pretty solid. Um, what this is doing is pretty much what you would expect it to. Think of it as a flywheel plus slider. It is giving you the balance option. And there's, of course, balance shafts, harmonic dampers, or just a normal flywheel. And um, what you can do is add weight 
or reduce weight. And the, the scale is not linear. And um, your engines that you have designed before will end up at 50, right in the middle. That's basically what all engines in automation have been for the longest time. Little fun fact there, <clears throat> there was actually a uh, flywheel mass slider setting since 2012. And that was just set at slider position 50 all the time. And <laughs> so it added a little bit of weight to the engine and did its thing, but it wasn't really accessible because it got, got nuked at some point because it wasn't interesting enough. So now we have found a way to make it interesting and that way is to tie it into throttle response. Throttle response is something that I have been mentioning before as something that is a little bit of a neglected stat and I really wanted to change this. So, Killer Rob, get to the fucking point. Yes, the fucking point is throttle response now is a very important stat. Why is it important, you ask? Well, let me show that first so that we know that what we are talking about. So, here we go into the... No, let me show you something else. Now we go into the detailed stats panel. Yes, we have all the graphs accessible right from the top of uh, this the UI there. So no more jumping about and so on. And you can tune here while looking at the detailed stats. Isn't that beautiful? So, right, sportiness. What has happened to uh, throttle response? Previously, it was one of the stats that you would find in the uh, drivetrain and performance section. And that is no longer the case. Instead, you're going to find it as a base stat for sportiness. So something that all these other factors multiply with. Previously, we had acceleration and braking as two separate stats, but really it is just positive and negative acceleration. So we rolled those together and amped up the multiplier a little bit. So we averaged them and then multiply them by, what is it, 0.65 or something, so that it's still important and most important stat out of these. Multiply it down cornering a little because it's not really the most noticeable thing because you're not usually driving, um, let's say, on the edge of... Uh, of landing in the ditch all the time just just part of the time right just part of the time so um cornering not as important this has been dampened down acceleration and braking has been amped up but on the other hand it has been dampened down because now it's only 0.65 times of what it has been before and now we have the new base stat throttle response throttle response is right what you get from the engine stat and well here we go let's take a look at throttle response then how do you generate throttle response one thing we have already talked about and that is the balancing mass so uh, the range here is pretty significant at the top we've just reduced it from 71 down to 47 so yeah that has hampered response rather severely you can go into the, no, this is not quite negative, but you can go into the negative, which is kind of reducing counterweights and all kinds of stuff. And you see the crank didn't like that. So this is affecting more than just the weight of things. It is affecting the um, stru structural stress uh, integrity of your internal components, uh, bottom end components, as well as um, the idle speed of the engine and uh, smoothness of course and all kinds of things so um, let's take another look so 67 there at 59 and then we have at zero we get up to 95. this thing would be terrifying to drive because as soon as you touch the throttle this thing would just explode basically and uh, also y you probably have it stall on you all the time because there's just no momentum that is staying with this one so yeah it becomes harder to drive and um, all that you would expect is happening one more thing here that is se severely affecting your throttle response and that is the fuel map and this slider in the previous versions and that is why i haven't been talking about it in the last little dev update those throttle response changes were not hooked up yet and now they are going from 100 to 0 does reduce it from 71 to 14. This is on direct injection which has the largest range. One thing that isn't implemented yet is the new emission system. 
Yeah, so um, I, I think that's that's the sportiness thing. But what does it do? Why why the change? Well, one observation that um, was made frequently is that old cars have a really hard time to get any sportiness, and that is true. And uh, while it's somewhat realistic, it was realistic for or it was happening for the wrong reasons. Old cars actually have one advantage. And that is, while they all have carburetors, which are pretty bad at being adaptive to situations, carburetors tend to be quite responsive. They just, like you, open throttle, more air comes through, and they automatically, with that more air coming through, and some accelerator pump going on to further amplify that effect, you're right away pulling more, for, uh, more fuel out of it. No delays, nothing, right? So they are pretty responsive. In old automation they weren't, and that was just outright wrong. And that has been now been fixed. So um, DCOE run here with, uh, that's a different car of course, um, much older, 1962. Tiny engine, 1.4 litre, dual DCOE, does get you a throttle response of uh, 54.7 in this example, and that is with a balancing mass setting of 20. Can get it up to 61 basically. And um, that's that's a solid number. So this car is reaching 38.0 in sportiness. 12.4 points are coming from the base value of sportiness that now is throttle response. That is the highest contribution to, uh, from all of the base stats. This car is quite a bit more tame, but uh, it also has, uh, let's see, it's set up to 35, so very manageable. And uh, it has a few map of 60 and uh, single barrel carbs. And it's coming in with a spoiler with a throttle response of 36. And that gives it a um, sportiness value, base value of 8.4. That is enough to give it an overall sportiness uh, rating of 16 in this case. <clears throat> and that is good enough to have something to compare to. Because one thing that you need to uh, consider is that if all cars have zero sportiness, then all cars are sporty. Think about that for a second. A much neglected stat that has found new life. Now there is one more very important thing we can do with this. And that is wheel spin. Throttle response is now tightly linked to wheel spin, or rather not wheel spin itself, but the penalty you get from having wheel spin. Because if you make a lazy dog engine, then no, no matter what you do, you will have a hard time getting the wheels to spin um, by accident, let's, let's say. While if you make a really hyperactive uh, hypercar engine, then uh, yeah, you are going to suffer from wheel spin drivability issues. Now let's take a quick look at what this does and um, how about we make this one just pull up to 100 there and we have our bottom end balancing mass down at zero. Twitchy as all hell. 94.5 is the score for throttle response and now let's check our power versus traction and make it a 50-50 power distribution. So that gives us exactly 5% wheel spin. Now let's see what happens if we pull that down to, um, well, that's, that's a good start, halving it. And now we end up with 9.5. It's still a very powerful engine, basically producing the same amount of power, or, or even more actually, um, but it is very, very sluggish. So, what happens? Well, um, uh, uh, well, yeah, his sportiness has tanked. That is something that we have seen from uh, our discussion before. But more importantly, let's take a look here. That's the same setup with more power. Now we have a wheel spin penalty of 0.1%. You know what that fixes? The awkwardness of utility vehicles with lazy engines that are geared very low because they need to getting massive amounts of wheel spin penalty. That no longer is the case. I think this is a beautiful solution to a rather complex issue. I also want to briefly mention what is 
being worked on next or what already has been worked on but didn't make it into the patch. And that is, uh, for one, let's start with power steering, also a very big change to how the game will play. Right now you have these options, none, hydraulic, variable hydraulic, and then electric and variable electric. What some of you might have observed is that power steering none only corresponds to a particular type of no power steering. There are several ones that are available. So the one that is the none here is the so-called rack and pinion setup, where it becomes really heavy really soon, even for pretty lightweight cars, but it has extremely crisp response. It is the most sporty type of steering. There are other types of uh, manual steering though. For instance, the what are, what are they called? The worm and sector one, and then there is the screw and balls or something. Balls of steel, uh, ball circulation, yes. Um, that one, it's basically also a screw where there's some ball bearings going around and being circulated around while you rotate the wheel. Very, very lightweight for how much weight you're actually moving. So um, there's a, basically a gear in between uh, that is translating that power to you, uh, or to the uh, steering of the car. And that lacks all kinds of feel in terms of sportiness, but makes uh, manual cars very much drivable, even trucks. No need for, um, for power steering there. So that is a pretty big hole in these power steering settings that we have. And that is what we're going to expand. We're going to add, uh, or we're going to remove manual power steering none um, and replace it with two manual types of power steering. That is the ball circulation one and the rack and pinion uh, version. And then we are going to add a hydraulic one, which is the ball circulation hydraulic and then we have the hydraulic one, variable hydraulic, electric and electric variable. And that, let's take a look at the list that I've made. That will give you a really nice range of different choices. And <clears throat> this has been particularly designed to uh, give you hard compromises. The, the ones that real designers had to face uh, while developing their cars. My favorite example, I believe, is the 60s GT cars. They were getting beefy, comfortable and powerful, and with that, really heavy. And they were all relying previously on rack and pinion power steering, i.e. no power steering, uh, human power steering. And that became proper uncomfortable. That was basically a wrestling match. And the cars just had gone up like 200, 300 kilos in weight. So at what point is it worth it switching to hydraulic power steering, which really n hammers down your sportiness? And it did not in the current version of, oh, well, in the current version it already does. But in the previous version you played, it was pretty tame in killing your sportiness. Now think of it as really aggressive in killing your sportiness. When you select that, you need to make up for the loss in sportiness by gain in comfort and drivability. And that is what is happening now. This is a much more significant choice than it ever was before. And I'm really looking forward to having that in. The second change is a little bit of an overhaul of differentials. Um, I mean, this has been mentioned before several times over the years, it has been in in the works, I am just lying there and waiting to be implemented with 4.2 uh, for, for many years. So uh, now finally we are getting to a little bit of an overhaul of differentials, at least when it comes to what options there are. We are going to add an early type uh, limited slip diff, the clutch type limited slip diff. With the arrival of that one, we have taken another look at the various stats of the differentials and I'm showing you the draft of that on screen right now. There is more to come though in terms of revamping differentials and that is tied to how you can distribute power. 
because these are behaving a little differently depending on what you want to do with them and have different limitations. So uh, this will be um, very interesting, especially connected also to drive type. So uh, I think that is it what I wanted to show you for today and just briefly discuss. And uh, like I said, um, big update is out and tuning videos are coming. I'm going to jump on those next and I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.